what do you think is the best solution to the rising cost of the rail project? Here's an answer. Possibly go to Milwaukee, do spurs into the Waianae Coast. The public wants another stamp at this. They want another say. They want another opportunity to be heard. And they're not getting heard. I don't know if that looks familiar. That's the header for this brochure. And it was the top of an eight page glossy brochure the city distributed throughout the island in mid 2008. Its goal was to convince everyone not that familiar with what was going on at Honolulu Holly that the term rail was the same as steel wheels on steel rails. It was a piece of propaganda aimed at voter support in November that year. The point is that the city's effort in 2008 was deliberately deceptive and attempted to arbitrarily eliminate other technologies accepted by the FTA as rail. There are several forms of rail and the city knew it. However, I am not sure the voters were aware how they were being manipulated. In fact, some people locally believe that FTA will not support automated guideway or monorail systems. So let me disprove that. The reason Maglev, I don't think, advanced is there was no one here pitching it and selling it. Nobody's going to make a buck off it because it's the right thing to do for the taxpayer. So it's being done. It's just not being done here. There's no reason why we can't do this. This is America. There's no reason why the future of travel should lie somewhere else, beyond our borders. Well, why is it hard saving Honolulu a ton of money by using 21st century technology versus 19th century steel and steel rail, which is going to drive the city bankrupt? Maglev transportation is the transport system of the future available today. Maglev trains are high speed trains using powerful electromagnets. Maglev is short for magnetic levitation means that these trains will float over a guideway using the basic principles of magnetic The latest project is Russia. 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 the maglev technology, by the way, which is in Japan, South Korea, just had a symposium this past week. Um, it's uh, in Germany and China. There's actually more builders of maglev than this steel wheel and steel rail, the three bidders. We've got Sumi, Tomo, uh, Bombardier, and uh, 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 Salvo. So there's actually more in the business of magnetic levitation, but the city dismissed it saying it's proprietary. You can only get one stop shop with Japan. And that's just not truthful information. This proves it. This shows something that would be better for our, our, uh, our environment, our landscape, and want to move if I can play. Sure. Uh, Cities have begun to explore magnetic levitation as a realistic urban transportation option. A maglev vehicle can maneuver through buildings above crowded city streets and through public parks. Two foot pillars. See that? Sure, I've seen that. That man will leave. Yeah, that's pretty high tech. 21st century technology. American made. Right. So how long? There's no reason why the future of travel should lie somewhere else beyond our borders. This is Brazil. Their university is marketing this to the world. Brazil is a man. The city county said they want. Now, I know that this vision has its critics. There is those who say high-speed rail is a fantasy. But its success around the world says otherwise. Thirty on its experimental magnetic oh, wow. levitation train Nobody from Maglev on Thursday for the first time in two years and after nearly doubling the length of the test tracks to 42.8 kilometers long. Floating on powerful superconducting <laughs> magnets, eight okay, seconds. That was Jim Powell. He's inventor of the Maglev 2000. It is a train that goes really fast and doesn't touch no. the track. No. It, Clears the track about that much. Okay. Now, this is not sci fi. These types of trains are in use around the world right now. Yes, uh, we, Gordon Danby and I, invented them in 1966. And uh, right after we published our papers, we had people come from Japan and Germany and all over the world, and they started their development programs, which are now operating in a number of countries. Okay, now, no offense to you at all, Jim, but I mean, it's 43 years later. Why are we suddenly talking about. <laughs> Why magnetically levitated trains might be a good idea. Well, where, where have we been? Why is America so far behind the rail curve? Howland 
but MP's supporters are more skeptical about why maglev has failed. Railroads don't want to change the airlines. Special interests have certainly kept, uh, kept a lid on this technology. And finally, Beijing plans to introduce Chinese-made maglev trains to ease early traffic congestion. What if we get Canadian company, Italian company, the Japanese company for steel wheel? We could have had five bidders on maglev. More competition, more competition, better bang for our buck, and a much 21st century technology. So the Americans build this. The world's second urban maglev train, Echo B, it still needs to prove itself to be safe. For two years since 2009, the Korea Institute of Machinery and Materials conducted the toughest performance test to train to have passengers on board. The urban type maglev train is also planned for construction in Hejon metropolitan city by the year 2020. With the rise of global interest on maglev trains, Korea's own technology is expected to make a noticeable headway. The federal government gives funds for this, and it was disqualified because it was proprietary. It is not proprietary. If it were proprietary, South Korea would be getting their, their technology from Japan. Germany would be getting their technology from Japan. China would be getting their technology from Japan. The United States would be getting their technology from Japan. That's not a truthful statement. That is a deception on the taxpayer that the only solution is steel wheel steel rail. And I just want to hail Mary to you, council members. There are two types of notable magnet technology. EDS used by the Japanese and EMS used by the Germans. Maglev trains can reach a speed of up to 500 kilometers an hour, but trains in Beijing will travel at 80 to 100 kilometers an hour for passenger safety. The committee says maglevs are big improvement over subways and light rail. We have a better way to do this, Chair, members. We really do. And it won't be a waste of taxpayers' dollars. It will be a savings. Thank you, Paula. Now, all of you know, this is not some fanciful pie-in-the-sky vision of the future. It is now. It is happening right now. It's been happening for decades. The problem is it's been happening elsewhere. Not here. My name is Tony Morris, and I'm President and CEO of American Maglev. We work with Georgia Power, and they called it Project Copperfield because the vehicle levitated like uh, David Copperfield. There's no reason why we can't do this. How do we go from XYZ 90 million ish in a 20 mile route to three times that amount? How would you how would you justify that to the taxpayer in your expertise? Government has a tendency to just throw all everything and then once once the project is trapped and once the taxpayers are trapped. When the vote came up, imagine if on the ballot said do you want Maglev? I'm sure we'd probably have the same results. If the vote said, do you want monorail? We'd probably still have the same results. The fact that it said steel wheel and steel rail and nothing else trapped us. It backed us into a corner. There is no accountability of them going a thousand fold because taxpayers are trapped. Florida is putting in a, a major Maglev urban maglev system for one-tenth the price of this rail. Honolulu could save a ton of money. They're building a fixed skyway. They haven't put any, any rail on it. You could convert that to a maglev system okay. and save everybody a ton of money. Okay. Here's a look at how the proposals stack up. Ensemble will have the lowest design build price, but adding in operations and maintenance brings the total cost of the contract to $1.4 billion. Their design build price is significantly lower than both ourselves and one of the other competitors. So you've got a, a very low design build uh, price and a very high operations and maintenance price. Delay the rail. It does not kill the rail. It's going to save taxpayers billions of dollars and a lot of earaches, as you heard in testimony. A lot of earaches. The advantage of the KISS transport system or KISS team for short. Because of its shape, it's capable of speeds in excess of speeds presently achieved using maglev technology. I've seen members poll after poll. The majority has changed their mind. That's why.
why Councilmember Tom Berg says he introduced a measure to put rail back under the Department of Transportation Services. So what are we afraid of? This resolution doesn't stop the rail. Thank you. Board members, any questions? I, I, have, I have a question, Madam Chair. Uh, many people would say the train has left the station already, and uh, particularly from the council and the mayor's office. But uh, can you explain to us why you think, uh, in, uh, in addition to the people being outraged over the $1.7 million this project is going to cost as of right now, and probably $5 billion it's going to cost more five years from now, uh, what makes you think that uh, we can revisit this and for an alternative technology? The federal government has a rules to a full funding grant agreement. Our grant agreement of $1.55 billion will not let us reduce to save money the number of stations from 21 to 20, from 20 miles to 19 miles. That's in stone. You can't switch it from another technology to bus rapid transit. I'm purporting, according to emails that I've been sending you guys, this has been going on for four years. The federal government has a mechanism for any recipient of a full funding grant agreement to what's called petition and amend the full funding grant agreement when you have a fiscal crisis is what we are in today. So long as the technology is rail, we can have what the FDA has classified as rail, monorail, maglev, and rubber tire and concrete. The reason we can have rubber tire and concrete is because our state legislature made that illegal. Because anything that leaves the guideway and uses a surface street of a technology has been deemed illegal according to Act 247, Hawaii Session Laws 2005. Whereby the only solution that I'm purporting to ask, have an answer here for you is no one here can answer the question before asking the government for more money or taxing us, have they, our heart, the authority, Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transportation, or your elected officials, or the mayor, or a congressional delegation, has anybody picked up the phone and asked the Federal Transit Administration, maybe, petition, because the video's purpose is Monorail is a, or maglev, is a two foot pillar. It's not a karst hole puncher. And what you see currently up is a lot of cost in noise mitigation that maglev doesn't have. You have a three to four foot cement wall for the whole 20 miles that you don't have with maglev. It's a lot of cement. And the pillar at an eight foot volume of a column reduced to a two-foot pillar with a maglev system is a savings in cement. That reduction over billion plus dollars will put us under the 5.2 billion. I'm in communication and have no party into this of at least 10 providers who want to come to Honolulu and tell the taxpayer we can save you. And if you folks would merely ask your elected officials to have a hearing. So we know that we've exhausted every possible means. I'm embarrassed that we have four council members going to Washington, D.C. to admit our mistake. And I know that we should at least exhaust everything at home. That's our due diligence to our neighbors of the other 49 states. That we don't ask them to forfeit highway funds for us. And because I'm embarrassed of that move, and the breach of possibly doing bonds and other mechanisms, which is a violation of the city charter, please, everyone in this presentation, consider the following. Until you can tell me or tell each other that we have no right to amend the full funding grant agreement, go home tonight and ask yourself this. If you believe that, you will always ever have steel wheel on those tracks as long as that guide weighs up until it crumbles, because you'll have to return the money if you change that 100 years from now to anything else. That's what you're being told. If you believe that, 
than President Obama's $8 billion package and $5 billion package to tear up old steel wheel rail and put it in I don't know what else to tell you. It's out there. The mechanism is there. Ask your elected officials to come before this microphone and tell you in writing that the Federal Transit Administration will not let you get a more affordable rail product off the shelf because we are getting the most expensive one on the planet that you can buy in the history of steel wheel rail. We have many options to follow. Board members, any questions? Um, board members, me? Mr. Berger, I just want to thank you for your presentation. Um, I think it's absolutely outrageous that we're, we're not doing that. <laughs> I was wondering what we can do tonight to help move this forward and try to <laughs> redeem all of the ridiculousness that's happening. Mr. Kowalskis, if a letter were written to him and Mr. Council Member Chair of Transportation Committee, Joey Monahan, if the two of them would merely collaborate and answer your question, if it's put in the minutes, can we amend it? Now, I've been pretty good thus far at having calling in with names. But there's somebody extremely slick and slippery. And if you can track it down, he makes over 300 grand a year. Ask him to answer the question, and we'll all be better off. Um, Mr. Berg, have you worked with your elected officials in your community, and what, what is the result? Um, you saw some footage of November of 2011. And three council members said in that hearing, we had no right to ask the federal government to use one rail product for another. And since that date, I've been asking, I've called, emailed everybody over and over. I called Angela Gates with the FTA today, sent her two emails over the weekend. No one, even when I worked for you, no one would pick up the phone. Let's say Rogers would pick up the phone, no return email. One time to answer this, I actually called and asked staff that works together to get in the office. And every staff member came in there and said, you're going to witness something. I'm going to get on the phone and call San Francisco. I'm going to call the FTA regional office, and you're going to all be my witness. And I got an answering machine and said, I've had it. This is the 15th call to you guys. You won't answer and return the call, which leads me to believe there's a sleight of hand going on here, folks. Let's find out a little bit more, because it's so simple what I'm asking. Our councilwoman won't respond. Their aides won't respond. No one will respond to the question, do you have a right and to go to the cash register and tell the cashier, I can't afford this anymore. If you think government has the right to tell you that there's no returns, all sales final, I don't know what that America is. Because the America I know of, we have the right, we own the cash register. If we want to return product, you just got to ask. Stand up, people. Let's ask. Have you been working with the opponents of this, the rail system? All persons. I've been trying to work with people who want this rail to succeed. That's why I'm here. I want it to succeed because you can't take it down. I don't want all these phallic symbols sticking up out of here. Any other questions on the board? Doug, I've got a question. In, in regards to uh, UH students benefiting and the YNI Coast benefiting, the spurs that will come on in later phases uh, to UH and then the spur to why and I is recommended by uh, uh, Hanamoto, uh, Hana Miyamoto, uh, for instance, and that, that why and I spur recommended going over slash through the uh, landfill, which requires a grade uh, the rail to go at grade, both there as well as UH. How is Hart overcoming the fact that steel on steel can't go up a grade over a certain percentage? The truth has come out. The technology called 21st century technology can't go up the hill. You had it here. Somebody told you. You can't use what you're getting. You can't that 5.279, whatever they're going to put on the price tag. Won't work for you, why and I? Why on earth would you folks on why and I want to support a project only 5% physically up and give in the other 95% knowing it will never serve your community? It can't make it up the hill. It's a, first of all, at 11 miles as proposed with no stops, qualifies as high-speed rail. So if you want 
the monies from President Obama of $13 billion, it's sunset rather in 2014, but they're still available. Congress is really excited. Many are for one town in America to get in the 21st century with the rest of the world because uh, it looks like Orlando, as Mr. Bond had brought up. If I can say this quickly, 13 miles, eight stations, fully fixed elevated guideway like ours, $400 million. Anybody freaking? Ah, they got it for free. No right away acquisition. Ours is the totality, 300 million. Tack on 300 million to the 13 mile guideway. 700 million, 13 miles. Maglev, American technology. Your city and county told you it didn't exist. And if I can say, Chair, the uh, authors rather than inventors, I'm so proud of this. In 1966, I have an autographed book from the inventors of Maglev. I'm shaking, touching the book, because I've been working very hard for all of us as a volunteer that there's a crime going on. And I'm not the only one. There are many companies, many good Americans, who want to advance and save on Lulu. And I, again, 10 people that I'm not making a buck off of, I could care less, other than they're saying, Berg, can we come to Honolulu and give you a better product? And I'm here to say, let's get the answer, please. Thank you. Let's take some questions from board member Pitcher, the local community. Right. I wanted to, uh, based on what we heard, make a motion. Uh, a motion to the chair that this board ask, or the chair ask that uh, the Transportation Committee Chair, Joey Manahan, provide a presentation, or coordinate a presentation on alternative rail technologies for the benefit of the administration and the people. To come and present at this board? No, the just a public presentation at their convenience downtown. Okay, I think this item should go in transportation. Your committee? Uh, I'm just making a motion now. I don't need to put it in committee. I just need a second. Is there a second? A second. Okay. okay. Any discussion? See that? Um, roll call vote. Do we need to ask uh, the public for input or who did we go on it? Well, we can ask the public. Also, for the benefit of the chair, I've pre written a, a potential letter that you could submit to uh, Councilmember Manahan on this, uh, on this request. I'll take a look at it. We're going to continue going up to the committee for the um, okay. we're taking this out to the community to be, um, speak. Please come forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm also concerned about the rail, and we all should be, right? But we're not, unfortunately. But let's put it this way. If we have to have a rail, yeah, I can tell the mayor and everybody else how to save money. Real simple. We get rid of this thing called TOD, which is going to be most of the 19 proposed stations that we're going to have there. Now, if we went to the original plan, which was to alleviate the cars on the road, as you see with uh, University of Hawaii, not in this session, we have a lot of room on the road. The intent was to go from Centrovia, couple days to uh, to uh, UH Manoa. So, if we we can all, all we need is eight stations, one in every district. We'd be riding uh, uh, what they call an express bus to town or to work or to school. Yeah, but they're not going to do that. They're going to make TOD, and yet it's going to cost us the taxpayers because when they float those bonds, we the taxpayers going to be going to be putting up that money. That's not fair to us. But as Mr. Burke said, many of us brought our concerns. We even asked a simple question. What's going to happen if we have another earthquake and the power goes on? They say they're going to provide their own. And if you're keeping up with it, they're just going to start getting involved with Hawaiian Electric now. Yeah? What's going to happen when we have all the lines full with, or all the cars full with people, and we have a, a power failure. Well, they say, no worry. 
we'll have the fire department come over there with all of their ladders and take these people off from the rail. You know how much it will cost us? Every time we don't call failure, every time something goes wrong, it's going to cost us. You know? To me, I think, like the guy said before, you know, because we have to pull up, it doesn't mean nothing. We can break them down and save them. And this came from the Department of Transportation, the first time. So I think we should do, you know, we should look into it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. As you all know, I have not been a supporter of the rail from the very beginning. For one simple reason, Panos Pavarados teaches engineering at the University of Hawaii. And that brilliant man told us time and time again, 19th century technology to meet 21st century needs is obsolete. And he was sidelined, marginalized, ridiculed, and his wisdom and his expertise was intentionally ignored because very powerful players had the city council in the bag. And if you're going to stand still for this boondoggle that is a get-rich scheme to profit very few people, then you deserve it. I've been complaining, complaining, making this issue of being anti-rail, that it doesn't meet our 21st century needs, and we have yet to have a proper hearing as we should, and as Tom has suggested. We need to bring this out into the open and find out why we are not being given an affordable option that is doable with either maglev or any other means of technology that is available today. What's, why must we be saddled with this tax burden for my, my life, the rest of my life, and future generations? It is a crime we better put an end to it soon before it's too late. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next speaker, please. Sorry, Alice Greenwood. Anyway, I agree with Tom. I mean, we've got to, I mean, you're looking at downsizing, you're looking at all these other uh, options that's coming to us, and yet we need to find ways to chip in, um, to make our living cheap. Yeah? And if we have that opportunity when, within, we should. Thank you, Al. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Good evening, Madam Chair and board members. My name is Ken Koike. And uh, thank you so much, Tom, for providing this information to our community. And uh, hopefully, it will help us understand another option that we have. Um, the rail was presented, if I'm not mistaken, Madam Chair, to relieve our traffic congestion for particularly people in our community here on the west side that have to get up like at 4 a.m. in order to just go to work on time in town or to go to school at the university or not. Unfortunately, as we've all come to find, the current rail is being presented to us not as a solution to our traffic which Panos made clear to us could be solved much cheaper using hot lanes and just reversing traffic using buses and so on. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to get an alleviation of our traffic issues. And the backup from the H2 merge, Middle Street, is actually getting worse. Yeah. So, if this debacle, which we now realize is just about building real estate around the stations for urban planning, uh, is going to move forward. If we have another option to bring down the cost from the 5.1 billion that our children, not to mention our taxes, yeah, it's going to extend to our kids and probably their kids which I don't think any of us are looking forward to. If we can lessen that cost, if, if, as Tom says, we can save money off of this project lower its cost and get actually better technology that would serve our children and perhaps their kids in the future, 
how can we not consider this? How can we not request for more information? And again, I'm so proud that this is coming out of Hawaii as usual, that we have always thought outside the box. Thank you very much. Okay, that was the last speaker. Um, so we need to take a, a water speaker. Thank you. Um, Tom, I've been listening to what you've been saying and reading your emails and I have only one question. Is there a time limit that um, the city council, whoever makes a decision has, before this can not be changed? That's, that's, that's a two-part question. Very quickly, no matter how the FTA answers, the email that I've sent you and everyone else can have, there is, again, the rules and it's chapter five. And after a full funding grant agreement has even been executed, you can get out of it. Especially if you can prove fraudulent behavior in the interim, how you got there. We'll be easily out of this contract if someone solved that problem. But the, the, the point is, is that I forgot to tell everyone here, especially this community, is that Maglev can avert the EV that Steel Wheel can't, because it can make sharp turns that Steel Wheel can't. And if we have fit, the Steel Wheel plows on through after it's destroyed all the groundwater in the car, so you know what? That when they get into town, the noise is going to be the biggest factor. And when people realize that, like airplanes and airports, you never let, you never got to keep doing windows and noise mitigation until forever, it's steel wheel rail is so much louder than model rail mag left that that has a value of the savings you can't quantify members. You can't put a price on noise. Why wouldn't you want something in Honolulu, of all places in paradise, something quiet? Begs the question. Thank you. Okay, Hi, Madam Chair. Uh, Richard Lanford, uh, Transportation Committee for uh, Neighborhood Board 36. Tom, I'd like to invite you to my meetings, um, which is the third Thursday of the month, and uh, bring your um, whatever you have. Uh, I want to try to address them because I have the uh, I have the real on my agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berg. Okay. Once again. Um, February 3rd, 2015, a letter to Transportation Chair of the City Council, Mama M. Um, we need to put a motion to... Okay, um, Mr. Fitz, have you could repeat your motion? That the Chair uh, submits to the Transportation Committee member, uh, Joey Manahan, a request for a public presentation on Real alternatives available to Honolulu, City and County of Honolulu. Thank you. And there was a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any abstentions? No. The motion passed. It's already. Um, Thank you. Letters already 